Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome back to the Minecraft 1.16 Hardcore Survival World, where, oh my gosh, Minecraft 1.17 is right around the corner, and I'm so very excited for that. However, that means we've got a lot of work to do inside of this world before we go on upgrading to that brand new Minecraft version, which number one of that is, uh, obviously, I need to breed up the bees again, because these dudes in here are going to be putting in overtime once we get to the new update. Can I breed you guys again? Yes, we can. Perfect. There's even baby bees already flying around all over the place. If y'all are excited for today's episode, please be sure to click that like button down below. And I'm in my brand new office. If so, if the audio quality sounds a little different or weird or anything, I would love some feedback down in the comments below. It looks like no other bees want to come out and play though. So we'll just leave these two for now. Now, it's been quite a few days since I last logged into the world here, but I believe the last time we were in here for an episode, episode we killed the ender dragon so today i would absolutely love to say hi to nova and nova and are we gonna get a baby oh i guess we will do we get a baby is it gonna be a coda hey little guy welcome aboard but anyways as we killed the ender dragon i thought it'd be a fantastic idea today to dive into the end and see if we can get an elytra and get some shulker boxes but first my friends i got a little catch-up work for you all here so let's go ahead and kick this off in a good old-fashioned time-lapse mode building up wait this is new a slime farm i have been digging out our mining tunnel like crazy all the way there from all the way down there with our little water elevator system that we've got going on and well we came down here and after uh venturing off this way to find some new chunk borders basically just digging around until we're in a new chunk revealing all of them and thankfully all the way down here we found a slime chunk right behind that cobblestone wall so coming down here we've got a half decent amount of slime balls down here that's actually more than i was expecting so that's gonna be awesome because now we can make sticky pistons and actually get into some cool redstone projects to make this thing actually work a lot better here is uh i unfortunately need to light up a lot more of the cave area underneath this entire place speaking of which there's one that's constantly been bothering me full of zombies right underneath our farmland but first as we're going to the end let's bring a lot of this cobblestone up with us my fancy smancy clock down here says it's time to sleep oh not yet time now it is all i know is the cave is somewhere underneath this wheat field every time i walk throughout here typically i'm hearing zombies i'm hearing creepers and i'm here i guess you can't really hear creepers but you know what i know they're down there that amount of cobblestone right there should hopefully get us through all of the end exploration that we need to do so let's first and foremost fill up the ender chest and then we'll come back and get all this stuff here soon because there's something else i want to do before we dive into the end i'm gonna guess right here and go down this way just to touch more and oh wow i got it look at me professional minecrafter this is a scary cave this is a scary cave i hate this cave so much oh god yeah hi scary cave okay those are all taken care of we're good we're good we can move on forwards so there's some free iron down here i always love me some free iron not that we don't have enough iron already but i'll definitely gather this i'm starting to see how this cave system down here could definitely be causing a lot of noise with mobs it is literally right underneath where we were okay i'm just gonna keep exploring until the end which is right here okay we're done exploring now i guess that's a little bit of a job done there and lighting up that cave but i can assure you there are hundreds of more caves around here that I still got to get to and I think that'd be something I work on mostly on streams because that seems like a great place to be doing it but what I'm thinking next my friends is I've always wanted to expand the fields around the windmill the windmill kind of just sits up here on its lonesome with a lovely sheep and we've got a carrot field right here off to the side what I want to do is kick ourselves off to a little bit of a mini montage mode over here and see if we can't get ourselves a lovely wheat field filling this entire area
we've done it we've got one additional wheat field placed down up here and it just needs to grow a little bit more but that's gonna look fantastic i still want to expand the nether wart down here too quite a bit because i think it'd be a really cool one to have filling this entire lower area along the river's edge but that up there is gonna look fantastic the size of it and everything is gonna be so very good and while i've been kind of walking around this area there's something that i realize we need to do also forgot to mention there's a little bit of a buoy out here of sorts that guy and that's an afk position for the slime farm but for that little thing i was talking about we need a lot of these guys and hopefully we have a little bit of gravel not really nope not really okay well that'll do then i need a lot of this guy and we need some torches which i actually have a good amount on me what we have left to do my friends is this this right here all of our pathways around this area i started out by adding lights to them and everything like that and torches underneath the carpets and just coarse dirt into the pathways going all over the place going all the way up to the windmill and then i just kind of stopped i didn't continue it everywhere so i want to spend a little bit of time here just getting the rest of this area cleaned up. I think I should probably go through and break all the blocks first, and then we'll come back in and fill in as much core start as we can. I want to see how much of this I can get placed in here, because obviously we're a little limited on the amount of core start we got today. But there we go. That should help keep us safe a lot more as we're walking through the farmland in the nighttime and really stop the mobs from spawning. The only place they could really spawn was on the edges of the pathway, so if we light up the pathways... We're good there. Honestly, kind of forgot that I had the pond over here with the little fishies inside of it. So it's kind of nice being able to just run around and see everything we've done in the past. There's so many little areas as we're now on episode 19, which is insane. There's so many things that I've been forgetting that I've actually done inside this world. First night is set it in now. So I think that's a great time we could take back and look at all of the work that we've done here. But I made a lot of progress on this. Really, it's coming together quite quickly. And the course is stretching a lot farther than I thought it would. Let's jump on top of the building so we get a little bit better of a vantage point. But from all the way up here, our area looks amazing. Oh, that's so very cool. Now we got, ooh, forgot that little section. But you can see the pathways actually have just a subtle amount of light to them. I didn't want it filling everywhere. You can see over there it's dark. But here we get that nice little bit of the light color. And that is going to be, oh, that's going to be so much better. And there we go. Pretty much all of the pathways all the way over to the castle at this point do have the coarse dirt and the little torches under the brown carpet in there. And it is looking so much better. But the way this is really going to pop, my friends, is if we are high in the sky, which I think that's really what we can do with the elytra, right? Yeah, that's a thing. We got to work on getting one low, so I need to get a few little bits right in here. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. That is absolutely amazing. This has turned into a little bit of an episode of just the chores around the farmland that really need to be finished up and cleaned up so we can move forward with everything else. And that brings me back over to the goals board where we have accomplished the netherite armor. That is done. Villager breeder was done a long time ago. That's really good there. Uh, farmland at the village. I, I think we've accomplished that. We'll keep adding to it. Build a castle it's in the works i've got the next section planned out it's going to be in the next episode or two and i'm so excited for it but we've got all of these we still got to build a city on mooshland we got to keep the auto farms going and of course uh, you know that one right there gotta keep that in mind but any other new goal ideas you have for me please be sure to let me know down in the comments below because i'm always looking to add a few new ones we've got a lot of empty signs on here i'm feeling pretty prepared at this point in time and the only thing that can really kill us well that's um falling into the void but everything else we got a lot of blocks to pillow out over the void and uh the only thing i could really need on top of this is maybe some firework rockets to get ourselves back out if we need to later on just to have have some emergency ones after we get the elytra set up that should keep us moving for now but uh, as you can see there that was all the gunpowder I have. Creeper farm's gonna have to happen here pretty soon. Leaving here at the bed, so that'll be my respawn point when I jump back through the uh, end portal, come back out of that place. And for now, I actually need some ender pearls or we just do some ladders and a trap door. I've gotta say, I'm pretty dang excited that we made this pathway over here to the end portal already. It's gonna speed things up quite a lot. And there we go in the good old stronghold and it's time to go into the end, woo! Oh, I love that. Our spawning platform's right here and the thing's right there, but it is very much in the middle of the void. Okay, well, 
Well, well, well, well, well. Start with a little bit of cobblestone and just get ourselves straight out underneath it. I think we've about nailed it being right underneath this guy. So I'm gonna create a little bit of a circle here. I don't even know if this is gonna be lining up perfectly. Oh, it's not. It's not at all. <laughs> but that's fine. That's totally okay with me. All right, so I brought some scaffolding out here and I'm hoping that we can use this and just go straight up to the top. And perfect. And then from right here, I actually need one more of these guys. And this is the worst part about the entire thing is we've got to create a little bit of a platform all the way around then grabbing the warp trap door i'm not sure if this works on top of the scaffolding or not it looks like it does it doesn't just send us right through the bottom of it okay well um in we go and we landed on a big plot of land over here perfect all right that is looking great as i'm just staring down at the end stone gonna bump the render distance up a good amount here and see if we can maybe find just some little bit of end city action nearby us warp 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 it's always when I'm out in the end dimension that I feel really lonely inside of a single player world. It doesn't matter what I'm doing or what's going on. I'm going to take that home with you there for sure so we can grow another one. But just being in the end dimension all the way out here is just so lonely after a while. There's just nothing happening. I would love to see an overhaul of this dimension. Now it is time for the end pinky workout of where we have to crouch and move ourselves all the way across here and we're safe oh that's always that's uh that's the end of the series right down there everybody we go straight down to that that is a game over for me oh there we go we got one there we go i don't see it oh there's no boat there's no boat but it is a city nonetheless, and that is shulker shells. How can I get over there? It's across yet another void. Why did I go this way? I feel like I could have just walked around over there, but no, I pillared to these islands in the middle of nothing. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. <gasps> no, no, don't look at him. Don't look at him. It's your boy Flip here about to cross another void again because, you know, that's all we do in the end. Oh, maybe not, though. Oh, yes, 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 crossing void. Okay, that's fine. Just jump. It's, we made it. It's okay. Do we connect here? Oh, that is deceiving. That's like, oh, yeah, we're safe. We're totally fine. And then, nope, dead. But here we are, finally at our baby end city. Okay, it's time to get some shulker boxes and see if there's any good loot in here. But here we go. Let's do it. The first time. Oh, he disappeared. That sucks. And we're flying. Okay, well, we got shulker shells right down there. That's perfect. Great, great, great. I lost him. I have no idea where he is. There he is. Hi, buddy. Woo, okay. On to the second layer now of two layers. And uh, there's going to be like no shulker boxes in this entire place. I did want to say for full transparency, though, I mentioned it at the start of this series, but I know we're on episode 19. So it's been quite a while since then. I do play in single player worlds with a data pack that makes it so shulkers always drop two shells. I just hate gathering them. I hate farming shulker boxes. They're just such a necessity to any Minecraft world that just operating without them to me just feels like you can't do the projects you're going to do. I think I just hit myself with an arrow. And there we go. 12 shulker shells later. We've got the first city out of the way and I'm not seeing anything else out here quite yet. I'm sticking out here until I can find one of those dang elytras. My friends, I have been exploring the end and doing some crazy end city raiding because check out what we have in this chest right here. We've got 38 shulk shells now and I got a various amount of loot. We even got a protection for diamond legs, but they do have curse of vanishing. You know, hardcore doesn't really apply. It's kind of just a dead enchantment. But over here, look at this biggest city I've ever seen that does not have a ship on it. <laughs> we made it all the way out here, been exploring. I found two other absolutely tiny little stocks of an end city, but that is a-okay for now. We've got to move ourselves all the way over here. There we go. We are on the island and now uh, for the whole raiding. And I see you. Boop. Oh, I missed him. Come on. Check him out. We got to get in safely. Oh, no, no, no. It's all bad. It's all going bad. Oh, he's out there. Nailed it. Oh god, yeah, hello. Yeah, there's a lot of them in here. Let's take that one out, let's take this one out, and we're flying, and we're just gonna go right up the middle. There's three of them, there's gonna be four right there. No, he needs a third arrow. Okay, let's do this guy right all the way up there. No, he's blocking, he's blocking. My aim is impeccable today, I'm hitting everything. Oh yes, perfect. I lost the last one, but there's so many shells down there, we'll have to go get them here soon. But first, what's our loot? Ooh, we got diamonds, five, six. 
Six diamonds. Unbreaking three diamond chest plate, diamond armor, and ooh, that's a good diamond pickaxe, actually. That's a good find. Climbing up the highest of towers, and oh, I just got hit, and that really terrified me there for a second, but I just saw another end CD. I don't know if you caught a glimpse of it. There it is right there. I don't know if it has a boat or not, but look how big it is. Oh, it's gonna have so many shulkers. I'm gonna need to make a, ch a shulker box to take home with us full of shulker shells. We are in the mess of it again. Oh my God, there's so many shulker boxes around here everywhere. <laughs> there's so many of the dudes. Holy cow. Just take him out. Where's another ender chest over there though? I want it. And then over here, I believe it is time to make ourselves a quick shulker box while the shulkers are shooting at us. You know, this is just a total power move right here. I'm so confused how the Cinnamon saw me. I swear I did not look at him, but there's an entity over there and I think I see a ship. Please, we just need to deal with you. I don't want to go out this way. Okay, it's so close. It's just right in reach. There it is, I see the mast. Yes, 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 yes. We can be done with this terrible, horrible adventure through nothingness. We finally found the end city with an elytra ship. Hopefully it's in there. I'm just going straight to the ship. We'll get the rest of this thing later, but I just want to make sure there is an elytra inside of this here boat. There is a dragon head on it, so that is fantastic. And let's just go right through the bottom. And we are inside and I see the elytra right behind the last shulker. Oh, please give it, give it. Sky's the limit, we've done it, we're finally done. Let's loot all this stuff. Ooh, good boots right over there. Taking out the rest of the ship here as well for sure because uh, I always take some more shulker shells. I think I'll wrap up this entire city here super fast and then that'll be about time to go home because I don't want to I don't want to be missing out on any of these good old shulker boxes as we can go. There you are. I was wondering where you went, little guy. Mine. 46 more shulker shells for us here. And I think that is this entire end city cleaned out. Maybe a few stragglers here and there, but that is looking fantastic. We've got the elytra and we have so many goodies. Up to over a stack of iron right now, which is super sweet. And we've got so many different random pieces of diamond gear over here and 23 more diamonds themselves, which is really fun. Now it's time for me to find my way home. That's gonna be more fun than not. Our total diamond haul is growing so quickly here. We've got 16 blocks and that'll be adding another eight more blocks of diamonds. I low key wanna get a diamond beacon at some point. That would be so fun fun to have. I've never had a legit diamond beacon before inside of Minecraft. I just think that'd be a really fun challenge to do. Obviously, I know people are going for the old netherite beacons and everything nowadays, but I feel like I'm pretty okay with this one for now. Netherite is just a whole nother level that I'm not looking forward to, but what we're going to use up here, this is going to be the end chest for now with all the extra diamond armor and everything that we got on the trip. That is a resource haul, my friends. And on top of that, we've got our elytra and do I have any mending books over here ready to go? Looks like a no, so off to Mooshland we go. But first, Elytra on. Time to take the first flight of the Hardcore Season 2 world. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, the base looks amazing from up here. Are the wheat fields growing in too? I told y'all it looks so good from the sky. Oh, this is opening up a whole new level, my friends. I am so very excited, but to, I gotta go to Mooshland. You know what? I'm gonna fly there. Goodbye, farming village. Goodbye, castle. I'll be back soon. And there they go into the fog. Good thing is this is actually only a three rocket trip to get all the way over here. So that's actually pretty solid. That's not half bad. Now over here, we are going to be needing one of these amending books right there. And then I also need to find the unbreaking dude. There we go. I was getting worried I didn't have one. The last villager I checked. Of course, while I'm here, I'll always take more glass. And there we have it. The unbreaking three Mending elytra for ourselves. Perfect. Let's get this thing mended up while we're over here getting all this glass and lanterns. There we go. Used up pretty much all the emeralds I have, but look at how much more glass we got and how many more lanterns we got. Oh, it's so, so good. I love the librarians down here. And these two. I love the stonemasons. And you too. Don't worry, Henry. I still love you too. Continuing on with today's plan of a bunch of just little mini projects that gotta get done around here. I was thinking we could design a banner for the castle, something that's gonna pop, something that's gonna look really cool and contrasty with everything we got going over there, which I think is gonna involve a lot of that color and a lot of the light blue color. So we gotta run over to the swamp bomb here super fast and get a bunch of blue orchids for ourselves. Thankfully, this trip is about to be a million times quicker because we can just fly high into the sky and just going right on over here. This flower forest is actually so incredibly close, so we're gonna have to set up a little farm there for a bunch of flowers here soon too. 
I see blue flowers. I need these. Could I have made everything I needed with what we had back at home? Yeah, for sure. But I really wanted an excuse to use the elytra and fly around the world. And here we go. We got all the flowers. I kind of love that. The lone dark oak tree sitting on a mountaintop. That's really cool. Sometimes Minecraft terrain generation is just amazing. I've made a pretty huge mistake here, everybody. I got lost and started traveling off in a random direction and went about... 400 blocks or so and with the minecraft 1.17 update right around the corner it's really not smart to be exploring all these new chunks because that's going to limit how close we can get the new caves back to our base so i think for the next little while at least until we get moved into 1.17 which i'm hoping is going to be next week with the release of the brand new update but we got to be careful not to explore very much here in the overworld so we can get all those new caves right next to us we're going in for the run we're going in for the run we're making it woo not making it not completely making it but we cleared it it's fine totem did not pop so i think we made it there's the beautiful castle loading right into view my friends we are back home and this is amazing oh this feels so good to be flying around the world i got so many corn flowers and so now it's time to make a loom and get to this old banner thing we are starting with a blue banner for the base ourselves and be lining it up a bunch here. So I'm gonna just dye a few of our white sheep blue for now. We can always turn them back later if we need to, but right now I need a lot of wool. Of course, I already had looms inside of here, huh? Okay, well, loom, you can go sit in there. But the plan here, my friends, is to make ourselves a blue banner and we're just gonna create one at this point in time. And I need a little bit of white dye here too. Now with this one, we're going to be starting off with a little bit of white and bringing in the cross right over here with the white cross right on top of that, dude. And then from there, we're going to be using the inverted chevron up there, then bringing in a little bit of the light blue action. Nope, that's a flower. Light blue. There we go. We're going to be throwing a gradient on this from the bottom coming up there, which I think is so very sweet. And then back to the white one, we're going to be throwing this big old lasagna or whatever trapezoidy shape that thing is there in the center. And then bringing the light blue back in once again. And we're throwing a dot right in the middle of this one. And check this banner out. Let's go put it on the castle first. I wanted to make something that's very versatile that we could use as a lot of different shapes and sizes as we're building more things around here if we want to put flags on top of those things or something so i thought the light blue and the white could work super well with like quartz but look at that how does that feel oh i love it i think oh, i think i really like that i really really like that I think that contrasts so well with the castle. Oh my gosh. And from far away, I like that. I think that's great. I just got to go get a bunch more light blue wool so I can make a lot of copies of these guys. This is looking fantastic. I got a bunch of them over here inside of the castle. And I said, just add them as you're walking up under most of these gateways. So as you walk in, you see the banner colors and everything like that around the castle. And I think it's really taking it away from that pure earthy tones environment and giving that little bit of the splash that I just love so very much. We got two here on the front, but I'm thinking about making some custom ones out of like full blocks of wool. They can be a little bit larger, maybe just like one right there or something, but we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of waiting to do more of that until this front section of the build is done over there. But I did think of something that I would love to do on the castle today. Right there, we have a bunch of chests. That is kind of the storage room for the castle, and it's very, very annoying to run all the way over there. We've got this lovely little room inside of here that doesn't have too much going on with it, so I'm thinking we can turn this into a castle storage room. I would love to maximize the amount of space that we're able to work with inside of here, but also on that ground is I don't really care if it's super efficient. I just want to make sure it also looks nice. So I was thinking if we give ourselves one, two, three, four, and maybe, yeah, let's go with four blocks of height right up here so we can start some cross beams first. And that actually worked out pretty perfectly. Okay, sweet. And then we can uh, strip all these guys down so it kind of blends in a little bit more with the build. We can put one of our million under chests right in there and give ourselves another and then pulling out a crafting table that I'm going to need here super fast. I was thinking in the top, we could just do some spruce slabs going all the way across here to give it a little bit more of a lip. Now, I did forget we have this thing over here, so I'm going to leave this area empty for now and we'll figure that out in a moment. But what we can do over here is do I want to put a way to get inside this building? We don't really have a way at all inside of this whole section of the castle, so I think we might have to. So let's leave a little bit of space right here for a door that we can just walk inside of, but it might actually have to be up on this layer here. So you could walk in and then you kind of take a step down, but otherwise we're going to be getting blocked by this slab. 
And we actually have the perfect point up here to lead to that next layer of the storage room as well for whatever the heck I'm gonna do up here. But for now, this will be totally A-OK. -okay. I'm just gonna light it up a little bit better. Now we don't have too much space, so I'm thinking on this side we can just have some rows of some chests stacked up next to each other with a little trapdoor action in front of them. Going all the way along here so it looks like a bit more of a storage room option, which I think could be very, very cool. And then if we stack those up just a few times, that should be great. And finally, adding in the chests, I added a little bit of the slab action right in here too, so the chests weren't just stacked directly on top of each other. It gives a little bit more of a realistic sense, I think. There we go, the chests are all in place now, and that's looking fantastic. And then I did bring a bunch of barrels, which we can kind of use these little corners around this entryway because it looks a little flimsy right now, so I was thinking we could just more or less reinforce it with some of these dudes. As far as the furnace system goes over here, I wanted to bring over a furnace right there, and then we're going to actually smelt those guys down, and I think I forgot fuel. That's probably pretty important for this. Yep, didn't bring any. Okay, back, nope, nope, lava bucket. Ha ha, the least efficient use of a lava bucket. But the very important use of the lava bucket was to be able to make two blast furnaces for ourselves, which actually I'm gonna put down there as the base and move that regular furnace up a layer. Just so we can feel like this is actually something usable. There we go, that's looking pretty fantastic in here. We have so much space to store some resources and just fill this all full of some junk in here. We've got a lot of barrels around there and I think the storage room might be about the same size, if not larger than my current one that I'm actually using, but that's a okay. We can do this right up here, just give ourselves a little bit more something going on. And maybe instead of the torches, we have about a billion of them. So let's go get some lanterns. And there we go, that's looking awesome. Oh, I'm so much happier with this now. There's so much space down here that was just not very well utilized. And I think this is gonna do a lot better job because you know, at least the, there's something in it instead of it being empty. So instantly better utilized. Now the last little bit of a teaser I will leave y'all with before we get the castle build rocking in the next episode is I need to place torches going all the way out here. Let me know what ideas you think you have for what we're going to be doing for the castle expansion over in this section because uh, the castles are growing, my friends. The castle is growing by a lot. We are not doing a wall on this one anymore. It's coming all the way out here. But that, my friends, is going to have to do it for today's episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please be sure to click that like button down below and subscribe if you're brand new, my friends. And with that, I will catch you on the flip side for yet another castle expansion.